hey guys and welcome back to one of my videos and today we're going to talk about ex01 war war gray bond as i like to call it so this is a mixture of war gray Mon, the whole line and obviously agumon bond of uh, bravery so we're just going to go ahead and break down this deck so with these uh i changed it a little bit from the video that i did when i used it against the bell star and uh the only two cards that i really changed were the the Agumons and then the Greymons, which we'll get to in a bit so let's start off right off the bat with the digitama so here you can either go Coromon or demi Marimon. i think these are the best ones for this deck i believe Coromon is actually better just because he gives you drawing power and you want to get to your cards quick you know because uh other meta decks are really fast at getting their cards blue for example you know that's a really uh fast color so here you go so every time you attack with the Greymon, you're able to draw one card so pretty self-explanatory since most of your decks gonna have Greymon in it you're gonna be able to activate that effect and then just keep keep drawing debbie marimon another one is just simple if you want to one attacking uh, a player you get a thousand damage per turn so that can actually go with a promo Greymon that could stack or if you just want to give your war Greymons an extra dp buff it can happen again but not not all that it's uh Coromon's better moving on to the rookies here we do have the agumon the bond of friendship one the bt6 the one that gives when you warp into Agumon Bravery, you get security attack plus one. And then when you play a tie, obviously you gain a memory. And then, of course, we're going to go ahead and play four copies of the new Agumon EX1. Oh, man, this card is very, very good. Uh, it's a very good support for Bond because when you attack, you can uh, reveal top three cards, add a Tamer or one Digimon card with agumon in its name so that's the key right there one digimon card with agumon in its name and since agumon bond of bravery has agumon in it you are able to get it and in the matchup that i had you can actually see that you know i use this effect and i actually get a bond of bravery and i get it to my hand which ultimately helps me win that match so <clears throat> again very good card and then obviously the other sorry the other one for this is, is that you could get any tamer as well it doesn't it doesn't uh specifically say you can only get a tie so that's very good so you can get either nokia's you can get uh marcus's you know whatever build you wanna you wanna use for not use for but whatever tamers you wanna carry in your deck you're able to grab grab it since it's not exclusive to a tie now here in the matchup in the matchup that i used i used four of the promo agumons instead of four of the starter deck sevens so this one is much better than the promo one just because if you ever warp into bond of bravery on top of this agumon when you attack you're gonna get that 2000 dp with the promo agumon it only works for you know if it has a gray mon in its name with bond of bravery it does not so that was a little change that i made i went from two to four just because there was instances when I was playing and you know I ran into some Omnimons and I couldn't swing over it since they're at 15 so with this Agumon you get that extra DP to swing over it so that's why I think this one is better than the promo Agumon so moving on to the last two rookies that I said was pretty self-explanatory two agumon promos now here you can switch it and you can put any other agumon you want you can choose the one that you know you reveal top three and you could get a Greymon or an omnimon or you could get the starter deck one which gives you a thousand dp to the digimon so that way it's not exclusive to Greymons. um but i just chose to go with this one because i prefer the two two thousand dp for when i swing with the promo Greymon. so let's go ahead and move on to the champions here so we got obviously one of the best Greymons, starter deck one Greymon gives you security attack plus one as an inherit, which is amazing. And we'll talk about, you know, little strategies and all that stuff as we go. Just want to get through the cards real quick. 
I had two of the EX1 Greymons, and they are not all that. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's I mean you have to wait until your ultimate swing, and then you can only play a tie. That's a play cost of three or less. Now, is it good? Yeah, I mean you can play a you know a tie for free, and you can play the the one that gives all your Digimon a thousand DP on your turn since it's a two cost, or you could play the you know tie the grown up one for the bond for free, but it requires you to attack for one, and it's an inherit. It's not really you know set on him. If it was set on him, that'd be much better because you really wouldn't care too much about losing a champion instead of an ultimate. But anyway, so I switched those two to put this Geo Greymon just to give me a little more uh removal card removal playing cards and not only that's gonna add pressure because if they swing and then they go into this Greymon one you're activating well basically you're getting two things out of it you're gonna delete one of your opponent's Digimon for 4,000 DP or less which is either a rookie so this would be good if you uh you know if you're if your opponent played a Digimon that you know restricts you getting memory then this would easily get rid of it without you having to attack it or wasting any resources to get rid of it so that's one way and then obviously the big one is you can play this card onto your field for free if it's in the security stack plus you get to play as on effect so really really good card so i chose to splash two in there and obviously as i said in my video you cannot i don't know at least for right now i do not see any decks not running any hybrid cards just because they can close out games and they're just they're just necessary <laughs> that's that's really all i can say and now uh, you'll see in one of my matchups with the bell star i you know i swang for all five and i did not have a nagunimon in my hand see and that would have been perfect because if i had him then i would have closed out the game in one turn so it's really crazy and because of that I didn't end up winning and that's what took us to round three moving on I have obviously promo Greymon security attack plus one he is so beautiful let me tell you he survives a lot more often than I thought he would especially if you're gonna stack him with with uh you know the promo Agumon that gives him 2000 K or the starter deck Agumon or the new Agumon the starter deck seven either way majority of the time you're gonna be swinging for 7k so that's honestly an ultimate and up an ultimate and lower i should say right so there's some ultimates that have seven six k uh eight k those are the only ones that kind of Greymon will not swing over but other than that you're pretty solid on that and he came in clutch for me in my matchup so i run four I and mean, you can switch this however you want but four just because that way i swing for two for seven k and i Get to trigger Koromon's effect to draw a card. So in case if I'm looking for something, there's a little extra drawing power plus attack. And uh, we move on to our ultimate here. I got obviously the new Metal Greymon, which is beautiful. And I can't wait to share the strategy. Uh, I actually played it out, and uh, it's just awesome. Talk about more removal. Uh, when attacking, you can delete a Digimon opponent's Digimon with 4,000 DP or less, right? So now if you're attacking with Metal Greymon and you have any of the Agumas that give DP damage, you're attacking for 9k. So it's it's a good possible it's, it's a good possibility that you're gonna survive attacking and deleting a Digimon on the field. So pretty good, pretty good. But the best thing that this card has, in my opinion, is that he gives piercing as an inherit. And that becomes nasty. Let me tell you why. Because if you digivolve on top into an Alterius mode, this Alterius mode now has piercing. So that is insane. So now you have an Alterius mode that has piercing, possibly a security attack plus one, and possibly, more than likely, getting 2k, 2K DP. And not to mention, now you're gonna get an extra drawing, uh, extra draw for attacking. So now you're gonna have an Altarius mode that has piercing, security attack plus one, plus 2k damage. So now you're swinging for 10k and you can't be blocked because you have piercing. That's insane. Insane. Really, only a mega, mega or obviously option cards will 
delete your Altarius. So again, that's so that's why I run four and three of the Metal Greymons for the piercing. Just because if you, I don't want to say if you brick, but if you're if you don't have a Mega yet, you can keep going into Altarius, and he's gonna get himself stronger when you attack because you're gonna get, be getting two thousand DP. And um, obviously his effect's gonna trigger every time you Digivolve on top, which ended up happening my third matchup. I actually, insane, first time ever it ever happened to me, but I ended up uh, stacking all four Alteriuses in that matchup. And it was insane. And it led up to me Digivolving to the new War game on EX1. And when I swung with this bad boy, he was at, he was at 20,000 DP, insane. So moving on to the Megas, right? We have our EX1, the new bad boy that just came out for the States. And I was a little skeptical. I was like, mm, okay, I mean, he has Blitz. You know, he could close out games. But uh, he's actually pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. You um, give him Piercing from Metal Greymon from the EX1. Excuse me. You have Altarius that gives him a buff. Obviously, security... Security attack plus one with the Greymon up there, all the DP, and then you uh, swing with the Quaramon, get an extra draw. What makes this card great is the Blitz. So honestly, the Digivolution cost doesn't really matter in this sense because you're gonna be able to swing anyway. So that's what kind of makes this card good. Is that it doesn't matter if it goes all over to your opponent's turn, you'll still be able to attack. Not only that, you have a secondary effect when attacking. If you have a tamer in play, you can delete and all oh, and you attack a uh, player. If you have a tamer and you attack a player, you're able to delete a blocker. So just in case you don't have Metal Greymon with piercing underneath, right? You can still delete a blocker so you don't get blocked since you have, you're going to have a tamer most likely. And then you're going to be able to swing potentially still winning the game if a blocker is stopping you. So really great card. I actually run three because man, it was such a difficult decision for me not to run four. So I did three and three because I wanted to test out the new War Greymon out and I actually love it. So I actually chose to keep this balance of three BT1 War Greymons and uh, three of the new one just because <sighs> option card, man, option cards, you know, they're such a big thing right now, especially with security control. And this card just is beautiful. You know, on top of when you Digivolve, you get a security attack plus one. So now you get attack one from there, attack one from uh, Greymon. So now you're checking three cards. And you're not going to activate any security skills from any option cards, which did come in handy to me because I actually swung. When I swung with this Bellstar, uh, I clashed into a Nailbone. And it didn't activate it, so that was another body that I, you know, potentially could have had stacked up against me, but this card came in clutch for me. Again, checking three, not checking uh, option cards, potentially all this, da uh, you know, DP damage added to them. So, you know, 2k from Altarius, 2k from the other Agumon, that's 14, that's 15, and then um, a 1k if you do have the Demi Merriman, which really doesn't really matter much, but be it potentially 15k so really only a bond could, could uh, clash against it or a level 7 if you do have all that in play which is pretty nasty pretty pretty nasty so stuck at three and then of course you have your your bob bond of bravery i did have four but i brought it down to two just because you have the new Agumon that kind of, um, you know, used to kind of get it into your hand. The only the only thing that would suck with this is if it's in your security, if both of them are your security for some reason, and you're never able to get them in your hand. Uh, and then that's where you can run a Agumon Expert, or probably just run one. So if you play it and it's on your great, I was about to say graveyard, if it's in your trash, then you could play the Agumon Expert and get this back into your hand. So that's one way of kind of getting them back into your hand. I don't run it because I actually saw Bond of Bravery way more than I thought it was for just running two. And obviously, this, I mean, he's hes awesome. I actually love this card more than uh, the Gabumon one. 
just because you can delete almost anything 13,000 dp or less you know with a bond of friendship you can't delete level sixes you can't get rid of megas unless you swing into it so it, that's kind of like the downside of it for this one you're not only attacking but you're also deleting something with 13,000 dp or less and not to mention if you do that then it triggers the other one which you can uh trash your security uh your opponent's security card and then you can swing so that's actually uh that's how i won one match i ended up swinging i had uh obviously tie in play because i warped so then i had swung i activated his effect so then i dropped him to zero security and then i was able to swing for game so that's one thing you can always do is if they have one security and you use his effect you're still able to win that game so there we go and then potentially obviously obviously you can uh, swing for two if you have this agumon if you warp on top of him you swing for two you trash one card from it if you use his effect so that's three cards in one turn and even then if you still have the memory for it and they only have two you can go ahead and drop a goonie for game again so, which is why a goonie mon is such clutch to to have or hybrids in general moving on to the tamers i only run six because i do not you actually actually brick <laughs> you actually brick and i only have 14 rookies so i just wanted to keep it at six tamers <clears throat> obviously you have your your main tamer ty so really really great ty is good because he helps you go through your deck every time you move up a card with uh <clears throat> agumon or greymon from the breeding area to the battery area you gain one memory and you draw one card this does stack so if you have two three four ties i don't know how that would happen but if you have four ties in play and you move up one agumon or greymon you're gaining four memory and drawing four cards so there was a matchup where i had two ties and i drew twice and i got two memory which was fantastic um so he helps you go through your deck and obviously helps you warp because once per turn you're able to warp into uh the bond by trashing two of your security cards and then he gets deleted if you do not have uh zero uh security left and then obviously you have your memory your memory set tamer i got marcus not only that i run graymons a lot of graymons so if i attack so now here we go here, here's a combo so you have your marcus you have your promo graymon plus one since you're gonna have a agumon underneath it with 7k so now you're gonna swing for 7k for two security and potentially draw from Coromon, right and now you're gonna suspend your marcus to gain one memory so yeah you see where i'm going with this it's kind of pretty nasty so if you let's say it was your you already have your game on there they didn't get rid of it for some reason now you start at three because you have marcus right you swing for the two you gain a memory now you're at four so again i just run two marcuses i do not want to have a lot of tamers and then i do run two atomic blasters instead of the gaia force gaia force don't get me wrong it is a beautiful card it is amazing however it just targets one digimon right and now it could be any digimon it's not restricted which is very good that's what makes it a good card but it's just one and you know with these new uh with these new decks there's a lot of uh i don't want to say a lot of rushing right but there's you're always going to have more than one digimon on your opponent's side of the field especially if you have like security control or if you have a rookie rush you're going to have more than one digimon you're going to be dealing up against so having atomic blaster you can choose number of your opponent's digimon whose total dp adds up to 8,000 or less and delete them this does not restrict only one Digimon. You can pick any Digimon you want as long as it adds up to 8,000 or less. So, it actually came in clutch with me a uh, number amount of times. So I run two. I wish I could run more, but I just do not have the space for it. And then, last but not least, I do run one red memory boost. Reveal top four cards, add one red Digimon, and then place the, uh, the rest in the bottom. And obviously another... Uh, memory gainer you know have delay i really have this card just so i can go through my deck if i need something you don't really need more than one to be honest with you because you do have a lot of drawing power here from the coromons if you attack 
and obviously the Agumon here you're able to kind of go through your deck a little more so you don't really need the two and then Ty is a good memory gainer and then you have Marcus so you don't really need the memory aspect of this I mean you could potentially go without it but it is kind of again I just have it just in case you know I brick and then I actually end up drawing this I'm like okay well let me see if I if the next four cards is a rookie and you know next turn I can gain memory to kind of come back from this turn so re really good card so there you go guys that's my whole play uh, playlist that is my whole list I know that looks pretty small there but um there you go that's it that's really it pretty cool i love this deck really fun to play with uh, if you want to see me play it i do like a, like i've been talking about i did use it against a bell star although it was a slightly different two cards were different but this is so so far my updated ex1 war war gray bond deck so i hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe because i am gonna update a lot more deck lists and just talk about them and yeah man this is fun this is very fun uh so let me know what you guys think do you guys use different strategies different cards how do you guys um uh, you know use your uh bonds do you guys use bt1 war on still how are you guys feeling about the ex1 you know let me know uh and uh as always i will see you guys in the next video